Ladies and gentlemen, you are now entering the Decent Christian Talk podcast. Enjoy. Decent Christian Talk episode number 126. I'm Gabe. I'm Josiah. This is a show by the fans. And for the fans. And we've got a great show for you today. We've got one of the best new bands out there today. We've got Idle Threat on the show today. Idle Threat was on my top 10 list last year. If you listened to our best of 2021 podcast a few shows ago. So I'm excited to have them on today. They must have listened because they wanted to talk to you, I guess. So. No, I found I out, you, you'll hear shortly, they're also, uh, well, the, uh, Ernie, who, who I spoke with, is a Braves fan, so. Oh, I guess, well, I guess we can't hold that against him. Well, you'll, you'll have to listen to that, but I'm excited to talk with him because I'm not the only one that had their album on the on their top 10 list. Their album, Blurred Visions, which came out last year on Tooth & Nail Records, um really really found their spot on a lot of lists last year and so i was i was curious to talk with them especially as a new band kind of navigating these weird times that we're in just kind of seeing how they're doing and checked in with them and i was excited to have them on and um i won't talk too much let's head right into the interview without further ado here's our interview with Idle threat. All uh, right, hit that horn, babe. Let's dance. What's going on, man? Hey, how are you? Doing okay. Yeah. Just uh, watching a little hockey and <laughs> nice. You the night. Uh, where you where are you where are you based at? Where you live? Um, I live uh, in the Morgantown, West Virginia area, which is like uh, a little more than an hour south of Pittsburgh. Cool. So you're a Penguins fan? Yeah. Nice. Nice. I'm uh, you know, by default a Preds fan. I'm not a huge hockey guy personally but uh justin our drummer he's like all in on hockey loves it so much Mm. so it's it's a fun time are you are you into any sports at all oh yeah for sure huge baseball fan um okay uh, atlanta braves fan my whole life just nice you know living here and having no team in tennessee we kind of claim either the Braves or the the Cardinals, Cardinals yeah. or the Reds. Um, and I like all baseball, but yeah, been a Braves fan my whole life. Um, I like basketball a lot. Um, and I like football. Football's cool, but more so into baseball and basketball for sure. I grew up watching the Braves a lot because I was, I'm old enough to where they were on TBS every day. And yeah. so I was able to watch the Glavin Maddox Smoltz era. Oh um, yeah, dude. So good. First, good first game I ever went to, uh Smoltz was pitching. So nice. also, I didn't even realize my camera wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Chipper is my favorite of all time. So oh yeah. So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Seeing him was really cool. I saw him um again before he retired. Um, obviously he played back whenever I first went, but then, uh, we went to Atlanta for, um, so my dad and, and my brother and myself, we go every year for Father's Day to a different baseball park. And, uh, hmm. that I can't remember. It was a couple of years ago now, but we went to the new Atlanta stadium hmm. and it was such a good time. And my brother's a more of a Red Sox fan and I'm pretty sure they played each other that weekend. So hmm. it was pretty cool just to see that and yeah it's been our little tradition that we've done up until the pandemic and then we haven't right. been able to do it in a couple of years but yeah hopefully back at it again this year hopefully 
Yeah. <laughs> with, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> the work stoppage and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I um I just want to say that the album that you guys released last year, uh Blurred Visions, I know this is not the first time you've heard this, but I considered that one of my favorite albums of last year. And it had to have been pretty humbling for you guys to to see all of that recognition last year it seemed like every time I turned around I saw you guys on a list somewhere what what was that experience like for you guys seeing that yeah um well I mean it's always like super well first off thanks for saying that I mean it never it never gets old to like be told that someone likes what <laughs> you have created and put a lot of time and energy and money into and um yeah just I don't know it's it was uh we knew when we wrote the the that record um that we had a special batch of songs um mm. we, we we all felt really stoked on everything that we had kind of put together and um, we had a, a vision for it and uh we worked with a great producer uh named brett romness um up in new jersey and yeah it was just like kind of the first time we've ever gotten that sort of uh, treatment with a record um in the past it's always just been self-funded and um at a friend's house you know where we would record and it was really well done but uh this was kind of like the first kind of taste of of what you know that sort of professionalism uh can look like and so to the time that it took was about a month uh, of actual recording obviously it took months to write the songs but when we see them on these little album of the year lists i mean seeing them on any list whatsoever is very cool but it's been incredibly humbling to see it in the top five on on several you know whether it be just um an individual or um i guess like a, a organization or, or you know whatever right. uh, a page uh posting about it it's yeah it, it never gets old for sure it's always super humbling and uh yeah we're stoked on it i'm glad that people resonated with it in a way that you know when you write something you hope that they do so mm -hmm. yeah i've i've talked to a lot of artists that have, have released albums within the last year you talked about having a vision for this album what were some of the things that you had to kind of uh work around with the pandemic and like how did that did that change your vision at all i mean how did that affect everything yeah um the only thing that really has done the pandemic uh to our vision not necessarily necessarily for writing uh the record but just in general for like the direction of the band um we haven't been able to play shows as much uh which is very different for us because we've always kind of been a band that that's what we love to do like we kind of write the music uh as you know the full expression of ourselves but it, it definitely feels incomplete without that live performance aspect and so um that's really the only thing that kind of changed for us uh if anything it kind of helped us because we've never really been a good like multi tasking kind of band <laughs> where we can do tours and write records at the same time. Like it's kind of one or the other for us. And, uh, you know, we hope to get better at that, but it, it was a nice time to just kind of like, all right, we're not obviously going anywhere. So, um, we know we, we have studio time booked in, in May, I think is when it was last year. So let's, um, yeah, let's, let's just like buckle up and, and actually get some writing done. Um, but yeah, as far as like kind of what we wanted, I know, um, sometimes I'll see in like articles and whatnot, like they'll talk about the pandemic being like um, a theme kind of incorporated within the record. And that's just purely by coincidence. It's not really like one thing that we sat down and we're like, you know what, like this record is about, you know, mm. it's about lack of control, but it's not about necessarily a pandemic being out of our control. Although by default it is, um, but yeah, no, I mean, the pandemic has really only affected just the act, the activity of the band, you know, being mm. as active as we could be. Mm. So I know at the, at the uh, time of this, um, you guys are putting out a music video tomorrow. 
for the song No Turning Back. By the time people get it, it'll be out for a few days. But why did you um, decide to, to on this song? And, and what does this song mean to you guys that, that you decided to make it into a video? Sure. Uh, yeah. So this one is um, when we put out Nothing Is Broken For Good, which was the EP we did first with Tooth and Nail. Um, there was a song on there called Cement that was kind of like the more uh, listenable, like, or I guess marketable for lack of a better word, just like mm -hmm. accessible um, song. And so <clears throat> when we wrote this record, No Turning Back was sort of that continuation of that. Like, here's a song that is like, if you're a fan of uh, heavy music, you know, maybe you'll like this, but also if you're not really that into it, it might be like a nice uh, step into that world. Um, Cause some of our songs for sure are a little more on the heavy side, right? And uh, this was just kind of, again, just something that a lot of people could grasp and be uh, hopefully interested in it. And uh, it also happens that, that that song is sort of like the the main, it, it fully encompasses like what the whole record is about. Um, and so when we were talking through, you know, it wasn't totally our, our decision to do that song as the music video. We definitely had that as like, probably it was going to be the song we did for a music video, but the label for sure really wanted us to kind of like step in that direction and, um, and do a video for it. So uh, yeah, that, that one, um, it is it coming out tomorrow and it's uh we've worked with the same guys that we did the last video with so just really familiar with like how the process went this time around and um there's like again we were super into a narrative piece plus live shots um and so there's a little bit of both of those things in there and um yeah i'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out so i'm, I'm excited for people to, to finally see it you talked about the the label uh, Tooth and Nail, which is just historically um, groundbreaking. I mean, there's so many adjectives you can use. What is it like being on that label? What, did you grow up listening to anything on that label? Like, what what is that like as a band, uh, both as an artist, but also both as a probably as a fan too? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I always talk about 2006 being like the most important or formidable year of my life. Um, in 2006, I became a Christian, um, and in 2006, I discovered uh, heavier music, um, specifically bands like um, uh, Under Oath, Norma Jean, Me Without You, and it's just wild to think that, like, you know, however many years ago that was now, uh, I would, I'll still, I still listen to most, like, I, it's rare for me to listen to newer music because I'm still just so infatuated with that time and those bands and they're still relatively active now. And um, yeah, it's just a dream come true really for us all because I can speak for pretty much everyone in the band that we all kind of grew up on tooth and nail um, in some way or another. And when we decided we wanted to shop the record, the EP around two labels, I mean, tooth and nail was like, probably the first one we sent um, an email to and they were the only one that got back with us so when when that happened it was just like yes like <laughs> must be a good fit must be like supposed to happen and um yeah it's really cool as a musician too to just be like you know what whatever happens with idle threat whether it be we go on to do you know five more records or more than that or less than that whatever like it's just cool to know that like the legacy that Tooth and Nail has, like Idle Threat is a very, very small piece of that now. And yeah, I'll always hold that, you know, super, super dear to my heart. Because <laughs> it was important yeah. to me as a kid, it's still important to me now. Well, uh, it's it's something to, to definitely be proud of for sure. Um I um I just think about the the legacy of the label and like I grew up kind of in the in the in the nineties and just I remember Plank Guy and Starflyer and and oh, yeah. all those bands that that st I you know just like you said I still go back and listen to Starflyer like all the time and yeah. it's just it's crazy that the formidable years like you said like what an imprint 
that leaves. Have you thought about people today? Idle threat is is having that impact in their formable years. What what is when you think about that? What is what is your reaction? Yeah, I mean, I don't think about that often <laughs> uh, because you know I I am just a normal dude that works a job still, and like you know we get to tour and and make memories with one another, but like. I'm not making a living doing this, you know, like yeah. it's, it's very much still just a huge passion of mine. And so, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, like I can go from playing like a show one weekend and then, you know, in those moments of being on stage and stuff, you have this, this feeling of like, oh, wow, I'm like, you know, not to sound like arrogant or, or too proud or anything, but you're like, you you are you took on this character you are you are something you know and then the, you go back to work on monday and like you're just like uh, another employee you know what i mean and so right um so anyways i don't think about it too often and and i but i do write music with the aim that somebody will uh take from it and um have some sort of impression from it and um i think one thing we do active uh, here in, in Tennessee, at least within Middle Tennessee, is uh, we're huge on trying to kind of bring people into this kind of world that maybe wouldn't have. And so, like, we have our own little festival that we throw every year. And um, I have seen that a lot of kids that come out to that, who I've known just, like, through church and whatnot, uh, now they listen to, like, Knocked Loose and, like, you know, I don't know, anybody, like, bands that are, like, doing it now on a big scale, and sometimes I think, well, maybe I had something to do with that, and, <laughs> you know, that is a really cool, like, feeling, but, yeah, I hope, I hope to be, uh, you know, a band that somebody, like, looks up to and is, like, cool, if they did that, I want to do that, too. Yeah. Anyone can do it. It's really not right. that hard. <laughs> One of the, one of my um, favorite songs from the album is actually the kind of a more, one of the more um, I guess the reserved songs is a song called Simon. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the, the the laid back low key song of the album. But I don't know why something about that song really resonated with me when I heard that. I, I really love the hard stuff, but w w the first time I heard that. I was driving and I almost had to pull over because it was um, it really resonated with me. What, where did, like, where did that song come from? And, and what it seemed, why did it, you know, end up the way it is kind of more mm -hmm. low key and, and all that? Yeah. Um, that was one of the songs that we did um, sort of in the latter half of the recording process. Um, we, full transparency didn't have a whole lot of lyrics going into the studio and we knew we had a month and so we uh there were times where we definitely divide so myself and zeke our bassist and he does all the like clean singing um sometimes we would divide and conquer the lyric process um and that was honestly just a song that he took um i had written pretty much the 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 main little riff if you want to call it that um, and he had kind of finished some of the the verses. And then, yeah, we just divided it up. And from hearing him talk about the song, uh, the lyrics just kind of came out of him. Uh, sort of a, a really easy process for him. Um, and it's not always that way. Sometimes the two of us clash and, you know, kind of get caught up on a certain word or a way that we're you know, who says, who sings it, who screams it. Um, but for that one, when he, I remember uh, sitting in the little lounge room that they had at the studio and he was like, hey, I think I've got something for this song. Let me, let me show you. And so he, he played it and I was just like, dude, that song, that's it. Like, there's nothing I would change about this. Um, some small ch changes got made within the actual re like recording of it. But uh, as far as like what you hear, like the lyrics, that was just him. It's uh, just the story of Simon Peter and him denying Christ and uh, Christ still persevering and 
loving him through that. And um, yeah, just the kind of ending of it being like, how could I know, not know that I'm loved, you know? So yeah, it's a really emotional song. I remember him playing it and I definitely like kind of teared up a little bit just being like, dude, you wrote something cool here. Yeah, and I don't always say that about him. Sometimes I'm like, dude, this sucks. But that I was like, this is it. Let's uh, let's let's get it going. So, yeah, I would. I I hope one day I get to hear that song live. Um, I know you guys are. You, you talk to your, you love to tour. You love to play music. I know you guys have this um, van that you're trying to fix. Do you do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so we had a van for years um, of our touring career, and uh, it finally just kind of bit the dust. Um, it's kind of at a point, too, where it's, like, not worth fixing. So we're in the market for a new van um, because, regardless, we don't, we don't have any, a, a vehicle at the moment, but we're still booking as if we do. So we've got stuff coming up this year that we've got to have a van for. So we're doing – I mean – We've never been one to ever ask, like, do the GoFundMe thing, but we finally just kind of swallowed our pride on it. Did a GoFundMe, hoping to raise a little money through that. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser show at home. Uh, we're doing, like, a real small, intimate coffee shop show, um, kind of limited to about 50 tickets. Um, probably going to release some shirts that'll help fund it. And we've kind of thrown around the idea of maybe, like, a bake sale or just anything, like, <laughs> just grinding because we're all kind of at points in our lives where like we don't have the financial uh flexibility within our i mean i'm married i can't just like fork out thousands of dollars to a right to my band you know and so yeah we're just kind of gonna grind until we get it and you know i have faith that we'll get there and, and we'll have it um yeah so we're looking so if anyone knows of a cheap van or is wanting to give us one donate to idle threat yeah, we'll give you our next like five records free. <laughs> <laughs> so, so kind of a uh, kind of uh, finishing things up here. Um, what what do you have? Do you have anything planned the rest of the year touring and festivals? I mean, I mean, even if you can't announce it yet, that's fine. But sure, um, we do have um, a so we're playing Birmingham, Alabama this Saturday. Um, with a band called Holy Gold and Reclaim the Empire um, and then two other uh, bands and that's not too far from us that's about two and a half hours away and then after that uh, we have the on March 5th is our band fundraiser show uh, we plan on doing a live stream uh, at some point to raise some money too so that'll be um, coming out soon and then um, we do have a tour it's not totally announced yet, but uh, it's going to be in May, about 10 days. It's going to go up uh, pretty much up to Pennsylvania um, to play a fest up there and then um, probably over to Chicago or Kentucky um, and come on back down. And then uh, we actually got a offer today for a pretty cool festival. So can't announce it yet, but <laughs> we've got stuff going on and that's later in the year and um hoping to get on a couple other festivals and uh, i will say the may tour is uh the blurred visions part two tour so it'll be us and, and two other bands um that are friends of ours and um we hope to do maybe a part three before moving on to start another uh record cycle so that's what we got going on all right man well i appreciate your time i really really like the ep and the, and the album that you guys have put out the last two years and um Wish you the best of luck and uh, safe travels in, in your hopefully repaired van soon. <laughs> Man, I appreciate that so much. Thanks for having us on. Or, and uh, yeah, please uh, keep in touch. Love to, love to chat with you again one day. Sure. T take care, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a good one. That was our interview with Idle Threat. Really like to thank Ernie for for uh, taking some time to talk with us. Um, if you if you listen to the interview, you saw that 
they have a show coming up March 5th, which is this Saturday. Um, it is a fundraiser for their van so that they can tour. Very important. You can get go online and get your tickets. Um, it's for Carpe Cafe, which is in Smyrna, Tennessee. So if you're in that area, go check them out. Smyrna is a is a kind of right in between Nashville and Murfreesboro, if you're not familiar with that area. But if you're in driving distance, make sure you go check them out. Support a great band. Tickets are only $15. And I think there's less than 50 tickets left as of recording this episode. So you might want to grab them as soon as you can. Uh, the doors are six, shows at seven. And they have Verser and Nicholas Wall opening for them. But you want to check that out. Help support a great new band. That's, all, that's what we're all about here. And um, if you haven't already, make sure you check out Blurb Visions, their album that released last year. One of my favorite albums that I still listen to, and I'd encourage you to listen to it. I know you talk about them a lot, almost as much as you talk about Wordle. And there's probably That's the a lot. two things. Yeah, you talk about Wordle every day, every day. But, I mean... Uh, I think this is important, an important fundraiser because a van is almost essential for a band that's trying to make it, especially on a tour. It's, I, I know I've heard horror stories and all different kinds of things on bands that just trying to get to the next town. So if you could help them get from town to town, it could really help provide a launching pad, rocket strap them into the stratosphere. For sure, for sure. And and again, if you are in the area, it's in that Carpe Cafe, um, which is near Nashville, since Smyrna, Tennessee. Um, they also have a new music video out that we just talked about in the interview. It's called, it's uh, for the song No Turning Back. Um, it's a really, really awesome music video. I really... I'm a big music video guy, so it was cool to see that. Um, and if you go onto the Indie Threat Facebook page and you can't make it to the show, you can go to their Facebook page, and I think they have a GoFundMe on there as well for their van. So check that out. Pitch them a few bucks if you can. Um, I know they would appreciate that greatly. Um, I wanted to speak for a few minutes before we headed off into the sunset. I know. There's a lot of uncertainty out there with uh, the whole Russia and Ukraine thing. And, you know, I just wanted to say that we are praying for those that are in Ukraine. And um, Josiah and I both have family and friends in, like, the Romania and um, um, the Romania and that whole area over there as well as Poland, which is just kind of in that area. And, and so we're definitely, we definitely have concerns. Um, you know, everyone has seen the pictures and videos and it's really troubling. And we just wanted to say that we're praying for them and everybody um, that we can find an end to this awful thing. And we hope that this show is, maybe giving you a few minutes of reprieve from that, but we just wanted to say that we're thinking about you. And if, if you're even listening and you're over there by chance, we, we are, we're with you and, and we're praying for you. Um, yeah. I, and with that, I, I guess we'll head off into the sunset. Well, we are on Twitter. We're on YouTube, DC Talk Act 2. Uh, Decent Christian Talk Podcast on Facebook. And we are also on Instagram, DC Talk Podcast. It is almost time for March Madness. So I'm sure we will have something fun on our Facebook page. We've debated about possibly doing a 64 song tournament for the return, the touring return of Reliant K. That, that, that will definitely cause some arguments. Even just choosing 64 Reliant K songs, you might have to go to 128 
it may cause some devastation and reform, as as you would as you would say. Okay, we uh, I think we're done here. All right, hey guys, we'll check you out next time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses. Thanks. Don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses. Thanks.